Today's parable of Jesus comes from Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbiter over you? He said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man provided produced plentifully, and he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I'm going to tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all of my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Um, and I, I, so I, I read out of the, and I use the Lutheran Study Bible. Um, it's... It, it's helpful. You, you you have a lot. They have notes, kind of giving some clarity and and giving like some some little nuggets of cultural background and stuff like that on different passages. And I think there's a there's a pretty helpful note here. It says um, talking about you, you this person who was not rich toward God. Obsession with money can crowd God's ways out of our hearts. That's why Jesus warns so sternly against covetousness. This is the most common idol on earth. He who has money and possessions feels secure and is joyful and undismayed as though he were sitting in the middle of paradise. On the other hand, he who has no money doubts and is despondent as though he knew of no God. Um, and then Augustine said, What is more perverse than a man who wishes to have much goods but does not wish to be good himself? Um, and I think this is, this is profoundly true in that money and materialism is an incredibly popular idol. I mean, I, I'm having trouble picking which example I want to use because we, we have, we, we reflect this so much, but I'm going to run with uh, a pretty simple one and I want you to self-reflect on this. And this is actually an example I used in, in a sermon a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But how you use your money reflects where your priorities are. So if your priorities are building up wealth are building up your your material goods like the guy in the parable that's where you're going to invest your money you're going to build bigger barns which in and of itself is not a bad thing but when you prioritize that when you idolize that it becomes a problem whereas when this man has an abundance Maybe uh, uh, a man who is rich toward God, who is seeking to be good, to be godly himself, his first instinct wouldn't have been, what am I going to do with this excess? I'm going to build bigger barns. His first instinct might have been, let me look around me and see if, if my neighbors need help, need to be built up. Um, so here's my challenge to you. And, and I'm going to, this is going to go a little over because I'm going to apply this challenge to myself because I, I'm not going to ask you to do something that I'm, I'm unwilling to do. For, um, just examine where's the first place you spend money when you get a paycheck. And two, where, if someone were to look at your finances where is the bulk of your money spent? Um, and a, like a generic example, 
if someone spends, say they make, uh, for simple math, say they make $10,000 a month. And of that $10,000 a month, they spend $3,000 a month on a gym membership, nutrition supplements, uh, a personal trainer, personal chef. They're spending, I, I forget what I said. They're spending a, a, a incredibly high percentage of their, of their income on taking care of their body. So what does that say to me? That says to me that taking care of their body is a high priority for them. Okay. Um, so with some of the things in your life, and, and I'm not talking about essentials. Okay. I, I think that's a different discussion entirely. So like, don't count rent, don't count, uh, like power bills and stuff like that. Like that is just survival. I guess that's taking care of basic needs, right? And God doesn't begrudge us that. So as far as like your disposable income, what is the first thing you spend it on? And I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say this. When I get paid, when I get the little email notification, you, your, your paycheck has been deposited. The first thing I do or at least when I'm on my phone. So if it comes up on my watch, sometimes I don't go to the next room and get my phone. But the first thing I do is I open up the Faith Life app and I give my tithe to Edgewater. And it's the first thing that comes out of the paycheck because it is a priority for me to worship my God in that way, right? So ask, what's the first thing that comes out? Man, this is long. Sorry about that. Um, but then also kind of look at where that disposable income is distributed. And uh, I'm going to, this is an example. This is no longer the case. Um, but once upon a time, okay, it's not completely not the case anymore. But when I was writing the sermon, it was my second year at the seminary. I was writing the sermon. I was sitting at my desk in my dorm room, writing the sermon on this topic. And sitting next to me, because it was tax season, was my W-2. So I knew exactly how much money I had made that year. I was a part-time employee, so the number wasn't super high, but I looked at, I, I started thinking, what's my percentage? What am I spending it on? And I, and I looked over and on my dorm room over there was my TV. I had bought my TV many, many years before, so I didn't count that. But under the TV was an Xbox that I think I paid $400 for. Games, controllers. Um, I knew I had a subscription to NHL.TV and I added all this up and the, the percentage of my income that I spent on entertainment, that I spent on video games and I spent on making sure I can watch the sports teams I like, it was, I, I think it came out to like 15 or 20% of my total income for the year. And that was convicting to me because I, I, with how I spent my finances, I was showing that that was a really high priority in my life. And I, I wasn't giving to the church what I should have been. And so that was convicting for me. So that's, my challenge to you as we as we look at this devotion, which I think is a really tough topic for us, are those two questions. And if you want to call and talk about it with me, we can do that. But I'm mostly intending this for a self-reflective opportunity for you. What is the first thing you spend your money on? What is your priority in that sense? And then what... How do you spend your disposable income? What is your priority with that? Um, this is a tough. This is a tough topic to talk about, um, and it's a tough topic to think about because the materialism, the consumerism, is deeply ingrained in the society we're a part of. But I think it's worth talking about. That's why I spent almost double my usual time on it. So. Um, thanks for sticking with me, brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.